Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, April 1st, 527 a.m. Central Time. Grain markets are mixed to lower this morning. May corn futures down two and three quarters at 439 and a quarter. May soybeans up five and a half at 1197. May Chicago wheat down six and three quarters at 553 and a half. May Kansas City wheat down 12 and a quarter at 573. May spring wheat down six and three quarters at 638 and a quarter. We had a big report on Thursday. Let's start off there. U.S. farmers intend to plant less corn this spring. USDA released its annual prospective plantings report on Thursday. Based on surveys completed in early March, U.S. farmers intend to plant 90 million acres of corn this year, down sharply from 94.6 million in 2023. Soybean plantings were projected to rise to 86.3 million from 83.6 million in 2023. Total U.S. principal uh, crop acres are projected to decline by a whopping 6.3 million this year. So the big surprise in the report was the corn acreage number right off the bat. That was the big ticket item right out of the gate. Uh, came in 1.8 million below the average trade guess, which was about 91.8. So the corn market rallied and rallied sharply on this. Nearby May corn futures were up 21 cents at one point following the report. They backed off a little bit into the close, but still a really nice uh, performance. Soybean acreage came in as expected for the most part. No big surprises there. There were a couple surprises in the wheat numbers. Uh, spring wheat acreage was higher than expected at 11.3. They were looking for 10.9. Durham acreage higher than expected at 2.03. They were looking for 1.65. When you look at corn and soybean planted acreage um, combined, it's it's off versus last year in most of your major corn and soybean states. Not every state, but in most of them. All of your I states, Ohio, uh, Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, all they're expecting, according to these surveys, reduced corn and soybean acreage combined. The principal crop thing was a big um, surprise, I think. I don't think anybody thought, I don't think most people thought we'd see such a big decline in principal crop. And principal crop was off almost everywhere. Now you look at the chart of principal crop acres over the last uh, 10 years or so, and this 313.3 million it's not super low or out of line with uh, where we've been. Yeah, it's off sharply versus last year. You saw a similar decline from 2021 to 2022. So I'm not going to say necessarily that principal crop has to come back up in, in June. Maybe it does. I know there is a strong tendency for the corn acreage number to rise from March to June. And USDA will tell you they don't really get a feel for acreage until June and that this March report is I'm not going to say a throwaway item, but largely inaccurate. So the principal crop and the corn acreage number, I think, uh, leave people asking some questions. But no doubt about it, the acreage numbers for corn in particular were uh, were a friendly item for sure. U.S. stocks of corn, soybeans, and wheat are larger compared to last year. U.S. corn stocks as of March 1st totaled 8.3 billion bushels, up 12.8% compared to the same date last year. Still, the corn stocks number was below expectations by 80 million bushels and was seen as being a friendly item. U.S. soybean stocks as of March 1st totaled 1.8 billion bushels, up 9.4% compared to the same date last year. U.S. wheat stocks as of March 1st were seen at 1.1 billion bushels, up 15.5% compared to the same period last year. It's no surprise that the stocks numbers were up versus last year. We knew that that was coming. The corn acreage number, the corn stocks number rather, was 80 million bushels below the trade guess, which is is friendly. Soybeans were 17 million above the trade guess, which is is a little bearish, and wheat stocks also above the average trade guess. I did some very uh, early and rough balance sheet work here for new crop corn and soybeans that I'll show you. So what I did here, if you guys are watching on YouTube, I took the uh, Ag Outlook form numbers for corn for 24-25 because we don't have a, an official uh, WASD set yet. So I left the yield unchanged at 181. That's like the trend yield that they started with in the Ag Outlook form. I took the harvested acreage that would be implied by Thursday's numbers. We typically harvest about 91% of what we plant for grain. So that's my harvested acreage number here at 81.9. Um, I took the beginning stocks down by 80 million because uh, the stocks number was lighter than expected. And it still spits you out all of this. I left the demand numbers unchanged from the outlook form. It still spits you out a pretty bearish situation. 2.2 billion bushel carry out, 15.3% uh, stocks to use. And if you're above 15.3% in stocks to use, that's still a bearish situation. But I'll tell you what that acreage number does. If it, if the acreage number is real for corn, it gives you a chance. It gives you a chance at better prices. And, and your best chance and easiest way to, to make this balance sheet look more friendly would be a yield uh, reduction. 
start cutting that yield down to somewhere in the mid 170s, a 175, a 173. You start to get yourself into a little bit more friendly situation. And that's, of course, assuming a lot. It's assuming the demand holds together. It's assuming a number of things. But uh, the report, I mean, it, it gives you a chance at some better prices. When you look at soybeans, I did the same thing. Um, we typically harvest about 99% of the soybean acres that we plant. So that's my implied harvested acreage number here at 85.6. I took the uh, beginning stocks up by 17 million because of the uh, grain stocks number. So using all this and USDA's demand numbers, you still got a 400 million bushel carry out. You got a 9.1% stocks to use. Anything above nine for stocks to use, really anything above seven is really not very friendly. And the the one issue that I'll point out here in soybeans is that USDA is projecting a very generous year over year increase in demand uh, when it comes to like this year's demand numbers and the ag outlook for them. It's a big increase. Um, I believe the crush increase will happen. They're looking for a hundred million bushel increase in crush, but they're looking for a big increase in exports, which without a Brazilian weather issue is tough to do. So soybeans, um, the, the report in total did not really do much for the bulls. You had an acreage number that was as expected and you had a stocks number that was actually a little bit higher than expected. So the corn number's friendly, soybeans, uh, probably not so much. Um, what did we do on our premium stuff last week? Uh, you had a couple videos uh, that were noteworthy. Can you uh, explain what you did? I did so many videos on Thursday that I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. So following the report, every report, I do a USDA snapshot video. It uh, comes out within 20 minutes of the release. It's a high level view of uh, what happened in the report. It's like three or four minutes long. The idea is to get you the info out really quickly without getting into too many details. Uh, we had some whole bunch of stuff as it relates to grain marketing on Thursday, uh, target orders, fill prices, old crop, new crop, corn and soybeans in particular. When I uh, issue a recommendation, I do a video and I explain everything that I'm advising. Why am I doing it? What percentages are we talking? How does this uh, factor into our previous sales? What kind of weighted averages are spitted out in terms of our um, our total pricing when it comes to both crops? Um, it's good good grain marketing stuff. I'm, I'm very transparent. I tell you the good stuff, the bad stuff, the ugly stuff, everything that I've done. It's a super simple approach to marketing. If you guys want to see the premium stuff, go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up this morning. This is a $50 per month subscription. Uh, cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. This is just a ton of info direct from us every single business day. And uh, that's it. This is what keeps the YouTube channel afloat. This is what keeps the podcast afloat is the premium subs. So if you're a premium sub, we love you. If you're not, uh, give it a shout this morning. Fund traders have slightly increased their net short position in the corn market. CFTC released weekly commitment of traders data on Friday. During the week ending March 26th, the funds were net sellers of 1,000 contracts of corn. The net short of 245,000 contracts remains historically large. Funds were net buyers of 15,000 contracts of soybeans. The net short of 123,000 contracts is one of the largest on record. And funds were net sellers of 10,000 contracts of SRW wheat on the week. So on Thursday, on report day, private groups estimated that funds were net buyers of like 10,000 contracts of corn. So you're still in a, in a position here where large money managers are very much sour on the grain markets. This uh, chart here, uh, the managed net corn soybeans plus SRW wheat, uh, negative or a short net uh, 460,000 contracts as of last Tuesday. Maybe that number's like 450 in real time, but even following that report and the rally that we saw on Thursday, uh, the funds still holding a big, big, big net short across the grain complex. USDA released weekly drought monitor data on Thursday. Rain and snow fell across the Corn Belt last week. The precipitation improved drought conditions in Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Portions of the High Plains also received rain and snow last week. As a result, conditions improved in both Nebraska and South Dakota. At the same time, a lack of precipitation in southern Kansas caused drought conditions to worsen. When we look at the percentage of U.S. areas experiencing drought, corn country 23%, soybeans 21%, winter wheat 17%, spring wheat 25%, and cattle country 13%. I believe we're going to see our first set of winter wheat ratings for the spring this afternoon and only 17 percent of winter wheat country experiencing a drought so the ratings may not be too bad uh this afternoon we did have some rain on the radar early this morning and overnight most of it is is further east of where we need it we really need it west of the mississippi and there's a little bit over parts of uh 
uh, Nebraska and uh, South Dakota this morning. It's rain, snow, mix, uh, whatever. Weekend totals were very light in Iowa. Some better totals in, in some parts of Illinois and Indiana, but not anything super heavy. Looking at the forecast again, most of the rains over the next seven days are going to be a little bit further east than uh, where we probably need them in terms of the drought and drought relief. U.S. corn export sales increased during the week during the week of March 18th. Net corn sales of 47 million bushels were up 2% from the previous week and up 4% from the prior four-week average. Mexico was the largest corn buyer for the week. Net soybean sales of 10 million bushels were down 47% from the previous week and down 26% from the prior four-week average. China was the largest buyer for the week. Wheat sales of 12 million bushels were down noticeably from the previous week, but up substantially from the prior four-week average. Taiwan was the largest wheat buyer for the week. Soybeans remain my concern here. Unknown destinations canceled 240,000 metric tons of soybeans, and that was just a bad number. So I, uh, I fear that USDA may need to come down a little bit with its soybean export projection for this current marketing year. Uh, corn, they're probably okay. Wheat uh, maybe could come down a little bit. I'm not too sure, but the soybean one is... Uh, is of particular concern to me. The S&P 500 continues to set records. The index rose 10% during the first quarter to notch its best first quarter since 2019. The S&P 500 currently sits at an all-time high of 5,254. The stock market as a whole has, perfor has performed well in recent months. All three major indexes, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P, have now increased for five consecutive months. In addition to the stock market performing well, the economy is also doing quite well. The final fourth quarter GDP reading was released last Thursday and showed that the economy grew at a rate of 3.4%, up from a previous estimate of 3.2%. This is the stock market rally that a lot of people really hate because I don't think people saw it coming. Uh, the S and is up 10.6% year to date. It was up 24% last year. It's up 140% from the uh, COVID low. There's going to be a lot of uh, comments regarding the economy. The economy's not good. We've got inflation. That's all true. But I think inflation in this sort of environment, when you've got these uh, nice looking GDP prints, is is absolutely positive. The stock market, which of course is is priced in dollars, so uh, the stocks look. Very, very good in the economy. I mean, say what you want about inflation. I know it's still a big problem, but uh, there are a lot of indicators that say we're looking good. The other thing, of course, is that the Fed's going to cut this summer at some point in time, which is positive for a lot of assets. I think some people would make the argument that, you know, you've got a, a market like the stocks that's really strong, and maybe that's uh, not positive for commodities. 2022, we saw a bear market in stocks and a, and a strong bull market in commodities for half the year. So sometimes you see like an inverse uh, relationship there. And maybe that's what we're seeing a little bit of right now. What did cattle do last week? Um, they ended the week last week on a positive note after a relatively rough week. Feeders were down 30 cents to up a buck 35 on Thursday. Live cattle were up a buck 40 to up 157. Cash cattle prices did soften last week. In the South, cattle traded at 186, which was steady to $2 lower. Up here in Nebraska, cattle traded at 189 to 190, which was steady to a buck lower. Over in the Western Corn Belt, Cattle traded at 188 to 190, which was one to two dollars lower. Box beef was mixed week over week last week. Choice ended the week down four dollars to close on Friday at 306.72, and Select ended the week at 303.43, which was a buck 96 higher for the week. Outside markets to start the month of April. Uh, U.S. dollars about flat. The stocks are higher again this morning. The S&P's up 21. Dow's up 120. Bonds off a little bit. Gold is ripping up $34 this morning. Uh, May crude oil down 28 cents in the WTI contract. 82.90 last trade. Have a great week, guys. We'll talk to you on Tuesday.